tell you how honored I am to be with you. We honor to have you. Come on. Yes, sir. Praise God. Woo! Well, glory to God. <clears throat> I could not help but um, yield myself to this anointing that's present here tonight. And I kept hearing the Spirit of the Lord share with me that there's a graduation anointing here. That many are graduating into new dimensions of faith, power, and authority. I kept, I kept hearing the music. Doom, 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 doom. No, 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 no. You should pick me up by now. <laughs> and I saw, I saw people graduating in your giving, graduating in your loving, graduating in your teaching, anointing, graduating in your ability to pastor. Woo! Turn, tell your neighbor, say congratulations tonight. <laughs> For there are many graduations. Turn your tassels over to the right. And you just entered into another level. Of, go ahead, get rid of the hat. And give the Lord a shout. Jesus, I, I pray that I can finish what I've been assigned to do here tonight. Um, you can't take your seat until you tell your neighbor how blessed they are by being able to sit next to you. And you may be seated. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control. And I think I like it. I, I'm, 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 I'm endeavoring as much as possible to contain myself here. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Let's go. Let's go then. What? What? What you want to do? Who is that boy, Pastor Dre, that said, like fire? Wasn't that Jeremiah? My life, fire, shut up. I, I, got, I got to get the move. Don't start my clock yet. Yeah, wait, wait. Hold on. I got a few things I have to cover before I, I go any further. Um, this Bishop Keith Butler. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, don't stop till you get enough. The Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And then it goes on and says those who are worthy of double honor, let them have it. Okay, clap one more time for the bishop. Yeah, yeah.
Uh, the pastor from Kenya said something while she was praying, and that word is very precious to me. She used the word cherish. We don't use that word a lot in our daily vocabularies. And it's a word I've learned to embrace. Like, like I cherish Dee Dee. But something got on me concerning Bishop tonight where I, I stepped into another dimension of gratefulness and gratitude for his life and his ministry. No, I'm talking about to me. It is an amazing and a humbling honor to stand in the place of a teacher at one of your teacher's houses. This man has taught D.D. and I so much unbeknowing to him a great portion of our ministry has been established on the principles that he's taught. And I heard the magnitude. Y'all don't mind standing a while, do you? Turn to the neighbor and said, I heard you could lose weight standing. <laughs> Some of y'all just made a decision. I'm going to stand all night. I, I, I heard the many accomplishments and the many countries and various places that the Lord has used his ministry and what magnitude of a man that we have the honor and privilege to serve, to submit, and to sow into. And so, so Bishop, I, I cherish you. I, I cherish the anointing, the years of knowledge and experience that God has given you and downloaded into who you are to create such an impact in the world. You, you and Pastor Deborah. I pray that you live long, you live strong with nothing wrong. I bless your family, Pastor Andre and Michelle and Christina, I bless you. It's a privilege to be. Who are these people? This is your father? Would he lay hands on me? <laughs> Just touch me. He touched me. This is where it all started, folks. And this is your mom. How many years of marriage? 69. 69. Then you got to give us at least one more. At least. Dee Dee's parents have been married for 73 years. We all live together. One out of 1,000 couples reached the 70 year mark. You got to give us one more, guys. In Jesus' name. Same grace. You live long, strong without anything wrong. Go ahead and prophesy that to your neighbor. You live long. Shall I receive it? Now be seated. Woo, Jesus. And like to the love of my life. Uh, 14,373 days we've been united in holy matrimony. Yeah, I thank God. Almost 40 years now. I don't know how she does it. 
I mean, she looks every bit of 39. And been with me. Oh, you, you clap if you want to. I'm saying what I want to say. Okay, ain't no woman like the one I got. I, I looked at her this morning, man. I looked at her this morning. And I said, I'm still so astonished to be able to be in bed with you every night. I, I was looking at her last night. She was sleeping. I'm saying, God, I'm winning in life and got the girl of my life right here with me. You, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Most guys may, may win the war, but they don't come out all the time with the girl of their dreams. Well, I've done both. She just celebrated 60 years of life. Yeah. And I told Didi, whatever Didi wants, Didi gets. She calls me the dream maker around the house. And then tops it off with Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Oh, y'all tolerate me tonight. Come on, man. Um, we don't have any extended work in uh, Hawaii and uh, when we heard about what you all are doing uh, we wanted to get in on it so it's no longer 50,000 it's 60,000 that you will be sending because we want to get in on it yeah yeah we, we currently don't have anyone there that we're supporting so why not jump in there with word of faith I don't know why you got to try to start your own he's already there that'll preach right there for some of y'all praise God I deliberately uh, didn't watch uh, anything that has um, occurred here during the conference uh, because I, I wanted to trust God to come in with something that would just complement and add to what has been already spoken. And um, I'm in the season of discussing words the power of them and the importance of them. Is that anywhere in the ballpark? Um, okay, that's, that's crazy, but I'll, I'll go. I, I got it. Maybe you got any money on Give me a hundred dollars. You know, you don't marry a chick, you check the purse first. <laughs> Make sure she got some money. I got a hundred dollars here for anyone who will, uh, let's, let's make a deal, bring me a toothbrush. You, you got a toothbrush? What are you doing with it? <laughs> you got, what? Well, no. No, I no, I, but I saw her. I, I I saw her. Okay, okay, okay. Give me one more. Come here, come here, come here. Here, take this, take this, take this. Fast, you run up here. You should, cause she hadn't pulled out. Give me the toothbrush. This the one you use? Oh, to your hair. Get 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 that get that. You got a toothbrush too? 
Okay, okay, you the last toothbrush I'm going to pay for. <laughs> give, give me one more. Okay, good. R run that over to her. Got one over there, too. Keep using it. Now, every believer, just last or like you have a Bible, you should have one of these. Every believer. Amen. Just like you have a Bible, every believer should have a toothbrush. <laughs> I asked your neighbor, said, did you use one this morning? <laughs> and all Put your hand over your mouth before you get <laughs> And what I've discovered, just like your Bible, this toothbrush is used improperly. Anytime you go in your mouth like this, and you, you, you have one of these and you use it every day. Any dentist in here, by the way? Dentist, hygienist. Where are you? What's the stroke of a toothbrush, Miss Dentist? The stroke of a toothbrush, the, the circular motion up and down. How about this? No. Don't even ask your neighbor how they use theirs. <laughs> but just like this toothbrush, many believers are using their Bibles incorrectly. Let's look at 2 Timothy real quick. Let's, let's go there. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to fellowship and to surround ourselves around your word. We thank you that the entrance of your word gives life and even life unto the simple. Now, I lean to Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our God and his responsibility and duty, is to lead and to guide us into all truth. Now, Think through my mind and speak through my lips that I will carefully and precisely articulate the word that you have given me to give to your people. Now, as always, sir, I decrease so that the greater one might increase. And I decree and declare that my body is strong and that my mind is alert in such that fresh revelation knowledge will flow freely, unhindered and unchecked by any opposing forces. And sir, I thank you in advance for allowing us to enter into new dimensions, this graduation tonight of faith, power, and authority. Our lives, all of our lives will never ever be the same as a result of the word that we're going to hear tonight. But most of all, what we choose to do with the word that we have heard. For your word emphatically declares that we should not be hearers only, but we should be doers of your word and the ones that will set themselves to do your word are the very ones that you said would advance. And now I thank you in advance and I also would like to covenant with you in advance to give you and you alone all glory, all honor, all adoration and all praise for whatever is accomplished. And for whatever is revealed in tonight's lesson. Now this is your friend's prayer. And I believe that I receive everything that I have spoken. And it is the, it's in the name that is above every name. The name Lord Jesus the Christ in whom we love. And in whom we believe. And everyone that's in agreement with this prayer. Let it be known by Shouting, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. Yes, indeed, I'm in agreement, amen. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to pay attention, man. <laughs> Second Timothy 2, 15. It states there, study to show. Study to show. Study to show. 
Now I study to quote. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Stop trying to be approved to all others and not approved unto God. A what kind of man? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Rightly dividing. What is pretty conspicuous in this absence is the opposite of rightly. Because if you can rightly divide it, then it's apparent you can wrongly divide it. And many people are wrongly dividing the word of God and have been using the word just like your tooth brush for many years. I'm preaching already. You keep it up like that, that, that rate, boy, I'm going to give you, y'all got any more hundreds over there? <laughs> but it's interesting that the apostle Paul is encouraging Timothy to study for a purpose. Study the show. I believe personally that there are more people who are studying to quote than to show. Study to know more than showing it. Oh, man. I just heard, I'm going to make you study. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. <laughs> For some of us tonight, this is going to be a watering of a lesson, but for some of us, this is going to be a planting. For some, it will be an uprooting so that we can plant what we should have planted years ago. Second Peter, go there now. This is the season that the Spirit of God has me in as it relates to sharing the gospel. It's sort of like the sons of Issachar that they understood the seasons or the times that they were in and they knew what Israel ought to do. There are a lot of people who are in seasons of your lives right now and you don't know what you ought to do. One of the things I want to encourage you, Hop, in is that you use words properly in this season. Now, now, understanding who your bishop happens to be, I, I know this will be a watering for a lot of you, but nobody can teach this like Mike Freeman can. No, I'm, I'm just a different dude, man. I'm just. When God made this one, he kind of just threw away the mold and said, we just going to need one of him. <laughs> and I haven't been sanctioned by people. I mean, my pastor, he recognized before he went to be with the Lord. Apostle Dr. Frederick K.C. Price, before he went to be with the Lord, he sanctioned, he said, the, the Lord has something uh, that he's going to do mightily upon your life. And, and of course, I received that. But my life has been a life that has been 
set apart to do the work of the ministry just like he has described it to me. And, and I don't, I don't, I mean, I mean, I, everybody can't be Bishop Keith Butler. And at best, if you're trying to be, you're going to be second at it. Now, there are wonderful attributes and wonderful things that we can add to who we are and that we get from others. But I, I like being me. I, I was bad the night that my mom and daddy got together in the backseat of that Fleetwood Broham. I, 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 was, I, was, I was so bad. Oh, man, look at your name. Say, laugh a little. God, dog. You, you won't sit there and just, God, I know how studious we are here at Word of Faith. I know that. I know that. And I've been asking God year after year, why does Bishop keep calling me back there? <laughs> I'm going to stay on this side. I ain't even going over. <laughs> I saw a cat swim by me that night, and I grabbed him by his tail, and I pulled him back, and I swam up a little fat. And then another cat tried to come alongside. I grabbed him, pulled him back. Then I hit that egg. A one in a million. Okay, 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 back to the Bible. Back to the Bible. Back to uh, Andre, I gotta cut this stuff out, man. So you trying to be somebody else when God has fearfully and wonderfully created you. And if you will just go ahead and inquire of him and get before him to show you you. See, a lot of y'all are living and impersonating their lifestyle. Like you, you've been an imposter. You, you, you have been developed or created by experiences and betrayals and, and letdowns and environments and hoods and where you've come from. And a person has been developed out of all of those encounter, but you have not yet encountered the person that God foreknew. And if I can ever get you to meet the real you, the one that God saw from the beginning, that one is smarter than the one you've been. That one is richer than the one you've been. That one is happier. Say I am. Who God says I am. Now where I tell you to go. Second Peter, let's look at chapter number one and get your eyes over there in verse number 12. Wherefore, I won't be negligent to do what? Of these things, though you and be established. Okay, who run in the Bible tonight? Don't make me have to come up there. <laughs> Verse number 13. I, I, I think it's necessary. I, I find it meet as long as I'm in this body to stir you up by... So for a lot of you, this will be a reminder. Now, now. The Bible talks about how you should speak. Go, go to Ephesians chapter number 6, and we're going to look at verse number 19, then we're going to go to Hebrews chapter number 13. 
Because I want to address firstly your boldness relative or germane to how you're speaking. Let's, let's take care of that area. Let's take care of that area. And then we're going to move over into some other areas that will assist you to get your mouth aligned with the kingdom of God. And in order to do this, you're going to have to be completely surrendered over to the kingdom of God, parenthetically, God's way of doing what he does. You're going to have to submit and give yourself completely over to the order of God. And I'm praying that you will do so to the degree that you'll begin to speak certain things boldly and, and your mind is going to have to catch up with what you just said. I mean, stuff will come out of your spirit. Like, like even this, this building, this entire campus, it, it once was a spoken word. And now we're sitting in something that was just once talked about. I wonder what you're sitting in that you've been talking about. And so if you don't like your habitation, if you don't like where you are hanging out and the surroundings of your lives, then you're going to have to go back and monitor what you've been saying out of your mouth and how you've been saying it. Did I say Ephesians 6, 19 and 20? Okay, let's look at that. And for me, that utterance may be what? Yes. Given unto me that I may open my mouth how? Boldly. How? Boldly. How are you going to open your mouth? Boldly. Boldly to make known the mysteries. Like we were on our way here. Uh, we were flying. Uh, obviously, there was a system setting right over uh, Detroit. It just, uh, just, uh, just drained. And the pilot, she turned around and, and, she, and she, she whispered to Didi and said, it's about to get a little rough. I said, that's a lie. <laughs> you, you just fly. You let me handle the wind. <laughs> oh, y'all, see, y'all, 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 y'all. You ought to speak boldly about it. Like, like pastor here, pastor said, my offering's going up every year. She didn't keep that to herself. I want you to testify right now. It's testifying time. But I don't want you to testify about something he's already done. Most people get up and testify Look at your neighbor. Say, get another look on your face. I'll just... <laughs> I am not that boring. Like, <laughs> I want you to tell your neighbor, testify about something that's about to happen in the next few weeks for you. See, see, you ain't even thinking, you ain't even thinking up the road future. You, are, you aren't even boldly declaring over your next few weeks. This is the month of August. It's the eighth month. It's the month, the number of new beginnings. Something new. Come on, some of y'all single ladies say, I'm going to get married this month. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that I may... <laughs> to make known the mysteries of the what? Of the gospel. 
verse number 20. For which I am the highest ranking diplomatic official sent from heaven on earth to do business on the behalf of heaven. And the conditions of this world doesn't dictate to me because I ain't from around here no way. Let the gas prices go up. Where I'm from, we handle all expenses. Now, whatever you make your will will be your bill. And the wrong choice will be your invoice. I'm here on the behalf of Jesus. Oh, see, y'all ain't going to like me here now. Okay, all right, okay, all right. I'm his replacement. See, you did that the thing. You see, your mind, your mind had to, what? Your mind, what? What did he, I said? I am this earth's answer. I am Jesus' replacement. He told me to occupy until he got back. I be the man. There's a new sheriff in town. You understand? I'm running this tonight and tomorrow night. See, and you don't you don't got a little, you don't you done backslid in your boldness. You, you don't even talk like you used to talk. Okay, let me go a little further. I, I got to calm down here, boy. <laughs> For which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I might speak how? Look at this. As I look at, push that person in front of you and say, you ought to speak. I said, push the person in. Now turn around and say, you better not do everything that man tell you. <laughs> you ought to speak boldly. My children won't be subjected to the conditions of this world. My family will always live on top. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You ought to have bold confessions every single day of your life. No drive-by shooting can come nigh this dwelling. There's no way a stray bullet can hit me. You got some believers talking about, it can happen to any of us. I'm going to lose a lot of y'all on this one. That's cat. Okay, don't even worry about it. If you know, you know. If you don't, you may be old. <laughs> Hebrews chapter number 13. Your kids, your kids, ask your children when you get home. <laughs> Hebrews 13. You know how I know God loves coffee? Because he brews. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. We, we ain't here to play with anybody. I, I love having a lot of fun. I love laughing. This is the most fulfilled role and assignment that I've ever stepped into in my life. It's the one he purposed for. I decree that there are multiple fulfillionaires in here. Yeah, 
when, when you become a fulfillionaire, that's when the millions and the billions will follow. Shout, I'm already rich. Shout, I'm already healed. Did they get Hebrews up yet? 13, 5, and 6? Is it up there yet? It's up there now. Okay, look up and read it, class. Ready, read. Okay, your conversations, your lifestyles, your conduct. Let it be without. You don't need to go off to anybody else's stuff. Now, I will, I will congratulate you and esteem you. Thank God for your stuff. But I want my own. And I'm going to show you just how you're going to fortify it tonight. And then you get your stuff, I get my stuff. We put our stuff together. We're going to run something. It says, let your conversations be without covetousness. And be what? With such things as you have, for he has said. What did he say? I will never. Read on. Verse number six says, so that we may what? So that we may what? Boldly say, ooh, I see you're speaking more boldly after you leave this meeting tonight. Go home and say, you furniture from the 70s, you are replaced. Now! Don't even wait to get home. Jump in that... Hoop that you got out there and, and, and just tell her you're going to give me a few more starts and you're out of here. And I dare you to get bold enough to say, and somebody else is going to pay for it. That's, that's how we bought our third jet, you know. We, we, uh, uh, they told me, I said, go, go find uh, a G4. And, um, and they came back and said, we found a nice one for $16 million. And I said, praise the Lord, but I ain't trying to spend $16 million for a jet right there and there. I can name that tune. For eight million. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, you gotta get this stuff out your mouth, man, so it can go to work. You gotta get I said, I I named that tune for eight million. Then the guy he called us back. He said, this is unheard of, but we're gonna let it go for twelve. Twelve million. No, I ain't paying no more. But I'm in the game. What did I have to lose? I stood in there. I said, I said eight. I wouldn't even try and pay the man eight for it. I, I'm just talking at this point. <laughs> you should just go to the mortgage company and say, I want that million dollar one. I, we used to do that. I, I took Dee Dee and my children out in front of homes, and we would stay out there for as long as we could. I mean, until somebody called the Popo. Well, I was just, I'm standing out there and I'm talking to houses. I'm taking them to land. I'm talking to the land. They wanted, Daddy, when, when can we go home? I ain't finished talking to it yet. Try 
to get a picture of our house in the Bahamas to the media department. Pull that out. I want to show you, show you something. I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about talking boldly. So the man called. He said, okay, okay, if you're serious, we're going we gonna to give it to you for 10. And I said, no, I said eight. Lord Jesus, about a few weeks from the end of the year, the man called and he said, Dr. Freeman, if you serious about the eight, I want it before the end of the year. I'll sell it to you for eight million dollars. And I'm, I'm thinking, where am I going to get eight from? <laughs> I done put my mouth out there, man. I started talking stuff that wasn't registering here. If you are going to participate in divine transactions, you're going to have to depart from human reasoning. You got to disconnect from the intellect. Stuff is going to come out of your spirit and say, what? You may just go home and tell your children and your wife, I love y'all. And they're going to think you have lost your mind. That we may boldly say, who's my helper? I won't fear what man I said Lord I, I put my word out here I told that man eight million dollars can we can we make that happen I'm not seeing what any man said and lo and behold the Lord said do it and when we did it, we didn't know that the man had challenges with the jet, so he had to pay for it himself all the way down to seven million. And boy, we flew that baby. Uh, we went into Greece. I was telling uh, Bishop about that. We flew that baby into Greece, got that baby up in there, nine hours nonstop. I ain't talking about no little ruly poo. No. <laughs> Say, I ride in the best. I, I live in the best. I, I, I eat the best. I, I wear the best. I wear. I'm a child I'm a of the most high God, El El Yon. Yes. Jehovah Jireh looks out for me. Now, put a praise on that. <laughs> Let me know what happens, Dee, if you, if you get that. Now, words are containers. Would you say amen to that? Amen. Carrying images and or pictures packed with power to produce and to pass down either life or death, light or darkness. Should I repeat that? Okay, I will. When you go home and you pull it back up, I will repeat it as much as you can press rewind. See, because what happens, a lot of you all come here, hear a lesson like this, and you don't go home and sit down with it. That church of Berea was no, more noble than the church of Thessalonica, and such they received the word here. I love your hair, man. I've been trying to avoid saying something about it the whole time, <laughs> but I couldn't help myself, and then I, I just love your hair. I'm going to give me a piece just like that. I <laughs> already told him, didn't I tell y'all? I'm going to give me a piece like that and I'm going to put it on. <laughs> they sell it. <laughs> but 
But the church of Berea, they went home and searched the scriptures daily. And there are very few believers who search the scriptures daily. That's why in some cases you have reduced yourselves to just studying to know enough to quote what you heard. Back in 2014, of course, the doctors gave me up. Dr. Didi stood with me in that. Most of you have heard that story. She shared it here. And it was 11 of us on this machine, ECMO machine, and uh, 10 of us died. I was the only one that came out of there. Well, see, that didn't just happen in that situation. That happened long before the attack ever came. One pastor, if I called his name, all of you would know. I was shocked that he asked me the question. He said, now, I guess now you really know that Jesus is a healer. And I said, uh, beg your pardon, sir, but I knew he was a healer long before I went into the hospital. Because if you don't know it before the attack, you won't be able to boldly. I said boldly. No, when that come out of your mouth, you got to kind of press your lips together like boldly. We, we, we walked out of that hospital. They said 98% of the people that they put on that machine perish. But I told Didi, everything is already all right. Amen. And Didi stood, man. She stood. That's my girl. Once upon a time, the way our relationship was going, she wouldn't have stood like she stood there. But <laughs> I'm glad I got it together, Dre. I promise you, I'm glad. Woo! Jesus. She would have said, oh, he want to just go to heaven. Just, I already know what he wants. I mean, Didi was so bold with it that my mama came up to see me. My mama and my daddy, they came up to see me. I was in ICU. I guess this was about two weeks in, in this coma, and I'm, I'm landing there. And Didi said, uh, Mom and Dad, uh, I, you, I'm, I, I'm not going to let you all in to see him right now. You, you, man, you can't be concerned what, what people going to say after you stand boldly about something. Because based upon the scripture, Didi has the authority over this body. No longer my mama. I even kind of got in the flesh when I came through. I said, you didn't let my mama in? <laughs> she said, I didn't want your mama coming in there and maybe falling apart. I had to prepare them to see what they were about to see, and I was not going to let. Now, my sister and them had problems with that. Like, who do you think you are? Didi had to do what Didi had to do. And it took a level of boldness. Because if my mama get in there, but my mama was a G. My mama was a gangster. I, I had to tell her to get out of her own body. Get out of there. Go. Because she was going to fight that thing all the way. I mean, to, to the bone she was. I mean, she was slowly deteriorating. I just saw her. I mean, 88 years old, all kind of things going on in her flesh. And then just mama just, my mama taught me that the spirit of a man is able to, to sustain him in all of his infirmities. I had to lean over the bed. I said, now, mommy, you get out of here. As your pastor, go and get out of here. Okay, I got everything taken care of. Everybody's going to be all right. Go. And about uh, 45 minutes later, mama, mama with Jesus. She never died. She just went to be with the Lord. I had such a revelation about that. I, I, never, I never walked up to 
uh, the, the, the casket that they had their body in. People are like, you're not going to go see your mom? I, that, that, my mom ain't in there. Now, you see, you got to be able to, see, that's why I study the show. You see, see, you doing stuff for the sake of people. Because you don't know what you should know to show what you should show. And if you are the only Jesus to show people Jesus, which one is he getting? Which one, what Jesus is, are people getting when they, when they encounter you? I know stories of Jesus walking up to tomb, gangster stuff, man. I love gangster movies, Godfather, that kind of stuff. You know, Don Coleon. The Don. See, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why Bishop got me coming to this bougie church. I'm so bougie. And, and so many things extemporaneously comes out of me. Oh, I got, I got a few little words. Jesus walked up to the tomb and said, Lazarus. I mean, them girls who stopped him and said, if you wouldn't have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus said, What? I was right there with them. I couldn't believe her when she walked up. I was like, Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> no, you got to get in the word, make it come alive in you so you can see this thing. She said, I know he'll get up in the great resurrection. And Jesus stopped. Look back at that, that, that girl. I am. No, 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 no. As you ought to speak. Y'all tolerate far too much. You're going to leave out here and you're going to go prophesy to some stuff. Lazarus, come out of there. That boy came hopping out of there. And he had to call him by name, I heard, because every dead thing in there would have hopped out. If he would have just said, come forth, man, everything. But the way he started that discord, the way he started that, he looked up to heaven, and before he even called out Lazarus, look at this, Pastor Dre, he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. And some of us, we get on, Lord, if it, if it be your... Can we go a little further? Yes. Go to John chapter number six. Because they are containers carrying images. And also spirit. Pictures packed with power to produce and pass down either life or death, light or darkness. 663 of John said, the words, is it up there? Well, read it, class. Ready, read. Now, he had to specifically allow them to know that they're life words. Because like they are life words, they are death words. My words are spirit, and you're going to have to deduce if they're producing death or life. Some of you are prophesying and boldly confessing over your own lives Detriment. I'm on a fixed income, you know. 
Well, who fixed it? You did, with your mouth. Every time I get a little something, something comes up, you know. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. My take-home pay ain't enough to take me home. <laughs> and you boldly declare. You go tell people, I ain't going to have enough to go with y'all on that. Y'all going, I, ain't, I can't afford that stuff like y'all. And your mama told you. What your mama tell you? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what your mama told you. Your mouth is going to get you in trouble. But mama never told us your mouth will get you in the triumph. Just like your mouth can get you in trouble, your mouth will get you in triumph. They're the steering wheels to your next stop. Your words. You got that picture yet? They got that picture. I'm in my backyard. And then the place, is that the only one you got, Didi? Yeah, okay, that's, I, we bought a peninsula. No, I, I was believing God for a house on the water. But how many of y'all know the E320 factor? The Ephesians 320, now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly. Of now, I'm in my backyard in Upper Marlboro, one of the houses, one of them that we purchased I bought 40 acres of land just by this same principle of teeth. I bought 40 acres of land, and we built what they say is the largest house in my county. The pastor lived there. See, 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 I don't know how y'all going to like that. But I'm boasting in the Lord. Because every time my gates swing open, I'm astonished. Didi, we live here. Every time that gate swing open, I hear, how great thou art. But it's a spoken word. Now, I was in my backyard in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, calling this place in. And I'm sitting out in my backyard by the pool, because the pool was the sea. Okay, say whatever you want to say. While I'm living it, you criticize it. And ain't saying nothing. You better get to talking. Turn to your neighbor and say, you run your mouth too much anyway. You need to... You better put some words of purpose in your mouth. And I'm out there, I'm out there so long. Ooh, I, I stayed out there one day so long. It was so hot. And I'm, saying, and I'm, I'm calling in it. You house in Bahamas, come forth. And I'm singing and I'm meditating and I'm calling it forth. And Didi comes out, Mike, and I'm, I'm gone. I'm in another country. I'm gone. Mike! I guess the girl thought I had a heat stroke or something. Mike! First of all, I don't like her calling me that way. Like, Mike, I like Mike. <laughs> and then, then I came back. I said, yeah, what is it, babe? She said, how long you going to be out here? I said, I'm tricking my soul, Dee Dee. She said, what? I said, I'm tricking my soul. Because my soul doesn't know the difference between live or memorex. 
My soul don't know the difference between something real and something imagined. That's what words are. They're images. You add the spirit of life to it, then boom, anything can happen. So I said, I'm tricking my soul. I'm laying back there, and lo and behold, this place came up. And I told the Lord, you know, I'm going to spend about $2 million on it. He said, why just two? Give him another number. And so I told the realtor, go look for something, whatever it costs, go, go find it. And they found this peninsula. And I didn't want to spend over two. But that was way more than two. That's, that's a whole, that's almost two acres of land. You come through the, off the, the providence of Nassau, you cross over a body of water where there's a marina, boats, in, and then you come to my land. That's the covered piece of property there. there. The, the, the islanders didn't even know. I didn't even know this exists back here. God knew it. He reserved it for me. All of my neighbors, they wonder how you get back here. It's the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous. Your mouth will get you in triumph. After the end of the day, we acquired that thing for $1.8 million. No, no. See, you're so busy about what stuff costs. And God ain't ever asked you to pay for a thing. He asked you to believe for it. What was it going to cost you to believe for it? He didn't ask you to pay for it. Why are you always putting a dollar amount on what dream that he brings before you? That's what disqualifies you. You start thinking about the amount and not the God. I dare you to put a praise break shout on what you have. Re Receive it. Receive it. Look at somebody say, I'm going to get my mouth open. Words have the authority to help, to heal, to hinder, to hurt, to harm, to humble, to humiliate, and to honor. Words. David said this in Psalms 119. Or was it 19? You all tell me. David said, let the words where, where is that found? Oh, they got it up? <laughs> you know that's what I cry out to God? Let the words of my mouth. David was also the same one that says, Place a watch over my mouth. You need a guard over your mouth. Do you realize, man, the stupid stuff that come out your mouth sometimes? I mean stuff like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Do you know Ephesians 5 or Ephesians 6 says, Ephesians 5 and 1, it says, let no corrupt communication. The fact that you say, I don't know how to, I'm, I'm going to make it, that's corrupt. That's corrupt. Amen. He, most people thought profanity. He ain't talking about profanity. He talking about anything that's diametrically opposed to what he told you to say. Okay, okay, you'll get a kick out of this. I just heard this. Uh, Proverbs. Is that the actual time, 927? How long, Bishop? How long? It's Friday, Bishop. And at midnight. 
We gonna be good and drunk by that time, boy. Woo! He ain't crazy. But after you finish saying all those things, you're going to have to say, but he blessed. No, I want for nothing. And I've been wanting for nothing for a long time. And all of the partners of Mike and Dee Dee Freeman Ministry, they want for nothing. Even in want, they don't know they want for nothing. Go ahead and shout and say, I want for nothing as well. Go to, go to, go to Proverbs 30. Let me show you something. Are you getting anything this far? Let me just stir you up. Let me, let me just water what you already know. Look at it in the TPT. They got a TPT around here. The Passion Translation. They got TPT upstairs. Y'all don't know. Hey, 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 Bible man. No TPT. I like it in TPT. Any of y'all got TPT? You got TPT? Look at chapter 30, verse 32, and, and read it out. Okay, okay, stand up, stand up. But you're a good looking self. I can't stand you. I can't stand you. Hair all to the side. Man, turn, turn around so you can see how good looking you are. That, that boy good looking, ain't he? And I'm all man now. Don't, don't get it twisted. Let's make that clear. Okay, read out so they can hear you. If you've acted foolishly by drawing attention to yourself. If you've acted foolishly by drawing attention to yourself, go on. Or if you thought about saying something stupid. Wait, 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 wait. Get the microphone. Get the microphone. Get a, get a microphone. Get, and, and give me a hundred dollars. <laughs> boy gotta get boy gotta be good. Boy, give me another hundred. Y'all better keep up with these hundreds you're giving me. I'll go home and get amnesia. <laughs> Conveniently. <laughs> yeah. Read, read it, read it. What's your name? Carrick. Carrick? Carrick, yes. not Derek. Carrick with a K. Yes. Carrick. Yes. She looking like that's mine. <laughs> that's my Carrick. Okay. All right. Carrick, read. Say, take it from the top. If you've if you've acted foolishly by drawing attention to yourself. Yeah. Or if you thought about saying something stupid. If you thought about, sometimes I don't think it, you even thought. <laughs> like, what were you thinking? You said that. Like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know what I'm going to do. But then get your eyes on him. My daddy told me years ago, he said, Mike, people will never know how much a fool you are until if you just don't open your mouth, boy, you're safe. And sometimes you need to just keep quiet until you know what to say. And, and watch this. Don't even talk to you. Stop talking to you. You, you. you are not authorized to talk to yourself yet. Is it okay to talk to me? I don't know. What are you saying to you? And until you say the right stuff to you, stop talking. Let Bishop talk to you. Read, Carrick. You better shut your mouth. You better shut your... <laughs> I, I bet you better not go home and say that. <laughs> 33. For such stupidity may give you a bloody nose. 
Read on. Stirring up an argument only leads to an angry confrontation. Ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't the boat that had to be removed that started it. It was the words. It was the words. It was the exchange of words that caused the boat beat down in Montgomery. Sometimes you need to just shut up. There's a grace. Let me handle this, husbands. The Bible says, ladies, that you possess an inward beauty that you will not see in the mirror, right? And you have the authority to win your husband with the word, without a word. It's the grace of shut up. You sit by a lady and say, you are grace to shut up. <laughs> see, 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 now uh, be seated. Let me continue with what I got to do here. Watch this. Words are free. It's how you use them that will pay you or either punish you. Some are paying and some are prospering from words that they have used yesterday's. We live in a word rule world. What did I just say? This world has been created by words. It has been sustained by words and it will remain by words. So, ladies and gentlemen, whatever words you use will determine what world you will live in. Now, go to Psalms 45. Let's look at verse number one. Your language directly impacts and affects your behavior, and your behavior directly and impacts your outcome. Now, you're in a moment that can revolutionize every outcome from this moment forth. I'm the kind of cat who will approach every moment like it owes me something. And you got to stop wanting stuff that you aren't willing to become. You got to become this. You got to study to show this lifestyle. Stop trying to get more income and proper outcomes without becoming more than you are. And you're going to assist yourselves by getting your mouth straightened out first. Now, here's what you have to understand. We're going to look at Psalm 45. This is what you're going to have to understand. If you're interested and dominating in life, the man that will manage his mouth is the, man, is, is, is the man that will master his life. Let me say that again. The man that will manage his mouth is the man who will master his life. Unmanaged mouth leads to unmanaged life. Psalms 45. Are you there yet? My heart is indicting a good matter. See, that's what I was doing in the backyard in Maryland. My heart was there in the Bahamas on the beach. It was indicting a good matter. The Bible says, I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I discovered years ago that you can write your own ticket in life with the words of your mouth. I think it was Brother Charles Cat who wrote the, the work Hung by the Tongue. Hung by the Tongue. Your mouth has you in this snare. 
The Bible says, Proverbs 6, 2, by your words are you justified and by your words are you snared. So whatever words you use, it will determine the world you live in. Let's look at this illustration or this example in Genesis chapter number one. Come on, don't get tired of me yet. I'll be done in a minute. And you know one of the best times that you should keep your mouth shut is when you really want to have something to say. No, I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. No, 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 you won't let me say what I got to say. That's one of the best times. I've been trying to tell Dee this for years. <laughs> There's a grace. <laughs> Where I tell you go? Look at this practice. Uh, 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 Bible man, I don't know if you're going to be able to keep up with me, but let's try. In chapter 1, verse 3, Read that. Stop, stop. And now look at verse number six. Stop, stop, stop. Look at verse number nine. Okay, look at verse number 11. Are you just saying that because that's we get with, are you reading or are you just, it's up there. Verse number 14. Okay, take a look at 20. How about 24? How about 26? Okay, how about 29? Okay, look at 31. Oh, I thought you were going to say say it. I was going to bust you out. I was going to say, see, they wouldn't read me all the time. Okay, he said until he saw. 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 Now I said he said until he saw. Well, what do you think you're going to have to do? Because 26, 26 says... Let us make man. How are we going to make this man? That's male and female man. Some people get offended when I call. I'm looking at D. I said, come on, man. And they like, who are you talking to? I'm talking to my wife. Well, why do you call her man? Because she is a man. She is a man with a womb. She is a female man. Female, female. And they're females because they come with a fee. <laughs> female. And if you learn to pay it, I told her on the jet, on the way up here. I said, you, man, you're the best wing man. I tell you, girl, you just, you right there for me. I mean, I needed some water. She grabbed the water, and then she popped the top off of it and gave it to me. And then I just leaned the bottle back over. She put the top on, took it back. I said, man, you just handles your business. I said, but why do you got to cost so much? She said, it's going to get worse than this. <laughs> it's just on the plane over here. He said, let's make that man just like us. Just like us mean, if he spoke his world into existence, you're going to have to speak your world into existence. Your world is waiting on your words. Your world is waiting on your words. 
your world William Shakespeare says, don't give your thoughts a tongue yet. Because some of your thoughts are not in line with God's thoughts. Don't give it a tongue yet. Don't start speaking out thoughts that are not aligned with the word of God. And can I close now? I appreciate that. But I got to give you eight tips on taming your tongue. Maybe we should look at James 3 first. And, and I think that will help you solidify this taming element. Look at verse number 2 of chapter 3 of Jaime. Jaime is Espanol for James. Hablo Espanol? Poquito? Mucho o poquito? Poquito. Mi mucho hablo Espanol. In my mind. <laughs> no, no, I say it. And then I got me a teacher. Me El Jefe in the spirit. El Jefe, hunting neighbor say that's balls. I pray that this lesson helps you with a, a different kind of gate on the way out of this building. That you will have some weight in your walk. And it is literally cultivated through revelation. Yes. That when I speak, things move around in the earth. Because they are backed by the spirit of the living God. James chapter number three, verse two says, for in many things we offend all, or we fail, or we blow it. If any man offend not in word, the same is a what kind of man? What, what, what else can we use for perfect here? Mature man. Mature man. And is able to bridle the whole body. Verse 3. Your, your body, by the way, is out of check because your mouth ain't checking it. You haven't even decreed I'm coming out of pornography. You, 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 haven't, you haven't given words of authority over some of the activity of your flesh. Gluttony. You, you haven't released words concerning just overeating. You, you, you haven't le released words over homosexuality and adultery. Smoking weed. Oh, Y'all don't smoke weed at word of faith. Some of y'all. <laughs> I learned this stuff from my mama years ago because I used to smoke weed when I was 18, 19. High school, high school, I go, high school. <laughs> so I would come in high. I was smoking weed. I, I'm, the, I'm fourth generation pastor. Coming out of the pastor, I, I'm, I'm smoking weed. And I walked in the house one day. I was so lit. Oh, my word. And I run into my mama. My mama. Here's my mama. Here's my mama. Here's my mama's there. 
I mean, I'm, I even got half of the joint in the back of my ear. I just forgot. I'm so high. I'm supposed to just remove all of the evidence, and I got half a joint behind my ear. See, some of y'all ain't ever been in any of this stuff. I know, right? Just let me tell my stuff. I bumped smack dab in the mama. Ew, mama. mama. Mama looked at me. She said, you mighty man of God. Boy, you going to preach the gospel all over the world. How did she get her mouth in a whole nother arena than what she saw? See, you, you still stuck in the visible when there's an invisible that literally supplies all your needs. My mama went over to the invisible, grabbed what God said about her baby. Now, now see, if you just study the quote, you ain't going to be able to bring this up out of you in pressure time. See, you are saying what you see instead of saying what you want. And the quickest way to get your life revolutionized and turned around is start just saying what you want. So then, if I allow what I see to determine what I say, I will never live in this world that was predestined. While we look not. See, because if you keep looking at it, the things that are seen, if, if that was the case, the first thing God would have said in the beginning, whoa, it's dark. <laughs> but he looked at darkness and said, let there be light. I laid in one spot. They had this profusionist who could not leave my bedside. I didn't know what a profusionist happened to be. It's someone who monitors the machine where blood is coming out of my body into this machine to put oxygen in the blood to go back into my body. One wrong slip. And I'm a dead man. Even if she has to go to the latest room, she has to call someone over because that machine cannot run without the aid. And Didi would come in that room day and night for almost four weeks. And I looked at some of those pictures and I said, Didi, because my daughter breathing, she went in there one day and just got to the point where she said, Mama, when is this going to be over? She brought my son in. And my son lost it. What, what did he do, baby? He couldn't handle it. He said, okay, come on, let's go. And my son talked to me later about what he was feeling. He, well, I'm, I'm at home, everything's fine. And he said, Dad, I, I just... I just thought you was going to die, man. Matter of fact, I knew you were going to die. When I went in there and saw you, I just, I just knew my daddy was dead. And you know what he said after he said that? He said, I knew enough to keep my mouth shut about what I thought. Because you being a speaking spirit,
And I asked Dee Dee, I said, how in the world did you come in here and see this every day and not just kind of lose it? She said, first of all, Mike, you taught me everything I know about faith. And she said to me, I didn't see the picture of you that was laying there. I saw another picture. She replaced the picture that she saw with the picture that she was seeing. Oh, Lord. You see? I say, you see what I'm saying? See, you're looking at a situation that looks nefarious right now, and you are commenting on that picture. Stop talking about the picture you see and start talking about the picture you want. I got all the money I need. Praise God forever. Praise God forever. Praise God and ever and ever. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Behold, and we've owned horses. We put bits in horses' mouth, and they obey us, and we turn their whole body by their mouth. Behold, ships, though they be so great and are driven by, yet they are turned about with a small whithersoever. Who's governing your mouth? First five, even so the tongue. Little member, boast great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set what? On fire the course of nature and set on fire of hell. Let's read on. Every kind of beast and birds and serpents and all that kind of stuff. See, it's tame and have been tamed by mankind. But the tongue, no man, no natural man. Because the natural man doesn't understand the things of the spirit. But you get that spirit man who's connected to Ooh, God Almighty, that man has a higher authority that he's getting directives from to speak so that he may speak boldly as he ought to speak. You can't tame that thing by yourself. That thing full of unruly evil, full of deadly poison. This is what gets me right here. Now, therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men. God, how can tongues be spoken out of your mouth and then curse your brother with the same mouth? Say that. I said it. That girl couldn't catch that. She said, say that. I said it. <laughs> My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Your tongue is double-minded. It's a product of a double mind. You, you don't know if I'm going to go with this, if I'm going to go with that. You got to surrender completely Amen. who you are over to the things of God. Because just one little match in Hawaii, in Canada, yes. you see the destruction? Yes. 
Y'all remember old Smokey back in the day? He would come on and say, only you. can prevent. And some of your families are wrecked and ruined now because stuff that has come out of your mouth as a believer. And you need to go back with your mouth and fix it. You do it. Oh, I ain't studying that. I ain't studying that. That was just God's approval on my lesson. You see, I ain't budge. We was going to finish this. They used to turn the lights off at the court when I was playing ball and I was behind. Oh, no, we ain't leaving. Somebody turn your car around this way. You turn your car, turn the lights off. We ain't leaving until I win. You should make that declaration tonight. I'm not leaving until I win. Now, let me give you eight tips on taming the tongue. Number one, be filled with Holy Spirit. You ain't going to be able to do it without being filled with Holy Spirit. Your, mon your, 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 your mouth and your tongue going to run off from you. Okay? Number two, be led by Holy Spirit. See, just because you're filled doesn't mean you're led. You, you put whatever scripture references, you go home and study. Put the scripture references to it. Number three, pray in the spirit. That's how you're going to train your spirit so that your spirit is going to be able to start speaking stuff beyond your mind. And you're going to have to catch up with it. Like somebody's going to give me a million dollars one day. I don't know how, don't know when, where, but I receive. And then even when you pray in the Holy Spirit, just go ahead and say, I receive that. What? I didn't understand. I prayed the perfect will of God. Whatever I just spoke out of my mouth, watch this. I receive it. Where are we? How many? Four now? Okay. Be quick to hear and slow to speak. Okay, next. Be quick to avoid offenses and stop taking them. I live in a fence-free lifestyle. You couldn't offend Mike Freeman if you tried. And my mouth has been helping me with that declaration. Oh, my word. As a pastor, man, you can get offended in many ways. There are a lot of offended pastors. And you'll hear it when they get up and talk. Because a lot of their talking is attacking. Not here at Word of Faith. Say amen to that. Yeah. Which number am I? Six, be, constant, be in constant communication with Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, what do you want me to say? Sometimes go ahead and rehearse. Just go see yourself walking with them and talking with them. You know, I rehearse different things that goes on in life, so I'll re be repaired. I'll be prepared with the right response because I learned right responses are resourceful. Sometimes people react. Reaction is destructive. You need to learn how to respond because your response is your responsibility. When you're talking to Jesus and you're in communication with, it's just like you're there. I ain't never had any of my partners that I've hung out with fornicate or smoke or cuss when I was with them. I'm like, how you do it when I'm not there? Because there's an accountability. If you walk around like Jesus, because he is walking right there with you through the person of the Holy Spirit, You'll tighten up stuff you say. People don't speak to you. You're not offended. You're not going to use your words to cuss God's creation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of y'all, did you hear me speak to you? I know you heard me. 
See, see, you out of control. It'll be a cold day in hell before I speak to you again. I'm telling you that. Are you kidding me? That came out of a believer's mouth? You offended that easily? And your mouth is not allowing you to grow up? Oh, I bless him. Okay, what's next? Be kind and tender-hearted, ready to make peace. This is how you're going to get your mouth straight. Be kind. Be kind. Turn to your neighbor and say, that, that one was for the people behind us. Go ahead and say, that one was for... Number eight, be empathetic in perpetuity. Be empathetic in perpetuity. Just perpetually walking along, being others driven. Put your feet in another man's shoes. Feel with others. Watch how your heart changed. Jesus was moved with compassion. Yeah, and it caused him to say all the right things. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a day that's coming when we will have to give an account for every idle word. I pray that you will harness this lesson tonight. Embrace it. Meditate on it. Go back over it. Your life will never be the same. Thank you so much for receiving the word of God tonight.